Crowdsourcing Love is brought to you by First Rounds on Me. First Rounds on Me is a dating app that I love that encourages you to actually go out on dates so you can create a real genuine connection in person rather than trying to through your phone screen. First Rounds on Me is great because it cuts out all the small talk and helps plan your first date. You can only have one date per day and you can only chat with your date 12 hours before your date starts. No more pen pals. Go out and get to know someone in person. Lately, I've been meeting a ton of people new to New York City and they keep asking me which dating app they should download. And I tell everybody to download First Rounds on Me because it's just so efficient. Everyone's busy in New York City. It's about to be summer and no one has time to just sit on their phones and message back and forth a million times. So download First Rounds on Me by going to the app store or by clicking the link in the description below. Hello and welcome back to Crowdsourcing Love. I'm your host, Marin. This week on the podcast, I am sitting down with the iconic New York Times bestselling author, Sherry Schneider, who co-authored the book, The Rules, and the book, Not Your Mother's Rules. And the core premise of the book is being a challenge is the secret to getting a guy. So some of the rules include don't speak to a man first, don't ask a guy out, don't accept last minute dates and don't see him too often. And finally, do not date him forever. So the through line of the rules is truly letting the man pursue you. The book has been a part of the cultural zeitgeist really since the 90s. So it's been decades and it's had its fair share of controversy. But ultimately, I do endorse the rules if you historically have struggled with dating or getting into a committed relationship because it really does offer tangible actions and it does offer hope, you know, if that's an area that you do struggle in. But without further ado, enjoy the episode. Looking forward to hearing your feedback on it and please rate, review, and subscribe if you do have a few extra moments. It's greatly appreciated. Welcome back everyone to Crowdsourcing Love. I'm here with Sherry Schneider from The Rules. So you co-wrote The Rules with Ellen Fine. Yes. Okay. And can you give us the origin story of how you guys met and came up with this concept? Sure. Ellen and I um, are best friends. We met in the city like in the ni- in the 80s, the early 90s, and we hit it off and we were both obsessed with boys and dating and getting married. And she was actually married at this, at this point. And okay. how old were you we, guys? Um, mid-20s. Okay. Yeah. So she and I would talk all the time, and she told me that this popular girl in high school told her that you have to play hard to get. Like, you can't be nice to guys. You can't approach them. You have to be, like, somewhat not interested, especially if you meet somebody you really like. You can't show it. Okay. And she got married by doing that, and she was teaching me to do that. And then we would meet friends, and everybody was telling everybody, and it was like, it was like telephone. Nobody was getting the story right. Yeah. So we said, you know what? We're going to write it down. Yeah. So we wrote it down, sort of like the Bible. Don't call him. End everything first. You know, never travel to him. You know, don't pay. Don't split the check. You know, just don't date a married man. Yeah. Like everything. Yep. Fine. The Ten Commandments. Yes. We took the guesswork out of dating. Yes. There was no vagueness. Everything was like, yes, no. I love it. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So you guys wrote this in the 90s, and then you went on a world tour. You were like a, no- a number one seller, right? Yes, we were New York Times bestseller. New York Times bestseller, and then you went on Oprah and all yes. of these different places. What was the biggest pinch me moment while you were kind of blowing up? Because now you're an OG. You're an icon. Like you've right, got, you've right. around the block. But what was the pinch me moment at the beginning of it all? Well, definitely Oprah because she agreed with us. She said she had a long-distance boyfriend, and mm-hmm. she was traveling to him, and okay. it was like the kiss of death to get on a plane and pack a suitcase and make it so easy for a man. But the pinch me moment was actually before we got famous. We were in London doing uh, the media tour. Okay. And we were on a morning talk show, and it happened to be Princess Di's birthday, July 2nd, 1996. And she was having reportedly a fling with a rugby player who was married. Okay. The married, the wife was the, the host at the show. And she was furious, and she sent her the book and circled, don't date a married man, happy birthday, Princess Di. All the tabloids oh all the tabloids ran it, and then everybody, page six, everybody called, and then and then Oprah. That's amazing press. So yes, yes. Wow. So, yeah. But That's that happened really to cool. us. Yeah. So even Princess Diana saw your book. She saw our book, yes. Amazing. How did you land your husband? Did you follow the rules? Yes. So I was were actually- they written out fully, and then you were like, okay, I have this like spreadsheet in front of me. 
now let me apply it. And then you applied it. Or was it kind of like you were using him as like a test, like a lab rat? He was the, the yeah, the lab rat. Um, <laughs> we were mean, actually but, writing you know. the book when I met him. Okay. And he said, what do you do for a living? And I said, I write. And he said, what? I said, it's top secret. Yep. And then it wasn't until he proposed that he made me tell him what it was. And his mother almost fell off her chair. I'm dead. Could, she said, these are the things we did in the 50s. We, you know, never yep. would call a man or sleep with them right away or do anything like that. And, it, you know, yep. it worked. And it's, see, the difference is that we're not 50s women. We have podcasts and we are mm -hmm. MBAs and doctors and lawyers. But feminism and empowerment has not changed biology. Biologically, men are born to pursue. Yep. They're hunters and women are more security oriented. So mm -hmm. if you pursue a man, it's just not going to go anywhere because A, he may have a type and he, you may not be his type. Physically. Right. Physically speaking. And secondly, he'll be bored because there was no challenge. Mm -hmm. They say men love to hunt, but if you put a dead deer at their doorstep, they'll they won't be interested. Yeah, I think- They it, like the chase. So in the rules, you say being a challenge is the secret to getting a guy. Is there such thing as being too challenging? We're hard to get, but not impossible to get. Okay, so, so what's the difference? The difference is sometimes women say, well, I'm not going to write back for a week. And we're like, you know, a day, four hours, you know, like mm -hmm. they they go to the other extreme. We're yep. not trying to be mean. Yeah, and in, we're the just book, busy. In, in the book, you lay it out really clearly, like- wait four hours to right. answer to the first text message. And yes. you give people the nitty gritty yes. takeaways of yes. how to actually land a guy. So what do you think the biggest mistake women are making right now in modern dating? Like they want to get married. They right. want to have kids. They want to have a family. What mistakes are they making? Well, first of all, in terms of appearance, they're not looking like you're looking. Like long hair, mm -hmm. you have to, you know, we think long hair is sexy and hoop earrings and a short skirt. I Basically, read the book and I, I took notes. Dress like this. Yep. That's the first step. You know, <laughs> uh, too many women are like the short hair and glasses and, you know, masculine and, you know, Everyone's too flannel casual, shirts maybe, like, and, you know. Too casual. Like everyone's like, kind of like a little bit sloppy. Yeah, too casual, like. sloppy sweats. Yeah. You know, that's not for dating. You have to look sexy. Guys like Sex, you know, the sex appeal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you think that people are being too casual when it comes yeah, to Yeah, too their masculine. Parents. They don't look Oh, interesting. they don't look feminine. Okay. Like that, just because you're a CEO doesn't mean you can't look feminine. Totally. Right. Totally. No, that makes sense. Um, one of the notes I wrote down was a lot of my past boyfriends I accidentally got into relationships with because when I first met them, I had zero interest in them. Right. And so of course I was hard to get and I didn't know I was doing it this like psychology on them, but now I want to take your rules and actually apply it to a guy somebody I want. Somebody like, right. Yeah, That's called guys. the rules by accident. When somebody says, I didn't do the rules, and I, I find out that they were either obsessed with another guy mm -hmm. or they were busy getting their MBA. So they did the rules by accident. It's sort of like you can lose weight by trying or by having the flu. Yes. You're still losing weight, but one totally. is by accident. Yeah. And this time around, instead of landing these guys who I saw the red flags, I was blowing them off, but then they were just so persistent because they liked the chase. Now I'm like, okay, let me actually apply this to a good guy, like right. the guy, the prize. So it takes a lot of discipline though. It's not easy, especially like when I like a guy, like there's a guy who I'm talking to right now. Well, there's a few. I don't want any of them to watch this because then they're going to feel like they're cool. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. maybe I shouldn't talk about the guys I'm yeah, currently seeing. Okay. So this is the rules in <laughs> act. Like we're like doing them right now. Yes. So your first rule is be a creature unlike any other, a C-U-A-O. Can you talk about what it takes to be a C-U-A-O? C-U-A-O. Yep, that's right. Yes. Um, you already talked about the long hair, the heels, the hoops. What else does it take? Well, it's a certain confidence that you have that you feel like any guy would be lucky to be with you. Mm -hmm. You know, like- you're the prize. Yep. It's they about, travel I mean, to you. They pay. They call you. Can you talk about having them travel to you? So, for example, let's say a guy asks me out on a date and he's like, come to this restaurant. And I find out this restaurant is close to his neighborhood and it's far away from me. How do I respond to that? It's better if we meet near me. That's all I say? That's all you say. And just see how he responds. Yes. And if he says, no, I want to meet here, then it's no dice. No dice. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm not traveling to you. Okay. And then, interesting. I've not heard that before. So, like, I'm like, also, I'm somebody who likes to go see guys. So, like, I like to, I'd rather be at their apartment than mine mm. because I just, yeah. like, don't want to host them. I'm a little bit lazy. But you're saying don't go to their place ever until you're officially boyfriend, girlfriend. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, 
first of all, like that's way down the road. Like we're just going on a drink date one hour for the first date. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we're having dinner the- a week later for two hours or three hours. And then the third date is maybe like a movie. Was seeing somebody's apartment is like way, way down the road. So how long, can you walk me through like the first? And you're initial- not hosting them. Like let's say after five or six dates, the guy's like, can I come see your place? They yeah. come, you know, like for a drink for one minute and like, you know, out and the it's door. Quick. Like I, yeah, just say my yoga class is tomorrow early or my trainer is, my boss needs to see me. Like you just get them out the door. But like you're happy, we're about you're not, ending everything. Yeah, but you're you're not being like negative. You're being happy, right? Like yeah. you're just like, oh, I'm busy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like I it's have not an early about morning. Being mean. I have an early morning. Yeah, we're not mean. We're just busy. Okay. We like shove them out the door. Like cute. Yeah. It's kind of sassy. Yeah. I like it. Okay. But so- I'm not interested in seeing his place until we're like exclusive, until we're boyfriend, girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. So interesting. So the first date, you're supposed to keep it to two hours. First date is one hour. One hour? Yes. Tell me why. Because- I'm, I've broken so many rules in my <laughs> lifetime, so I'm just like it's never too, It's never too late. Okay. Uh, it's one hour because you don't want to overshare. The less time, the less talk. It's coffee or drinks. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't want to do our life story here. Like when I was mm-hmm. seven, my father moved. It's like, we're just like talking about movies, work, weather. And then we're like, wow, this was so much fun, but I have to get going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then if he want, if he likes you, then he'll ask you out for dinner for the next date. I suppose because that's part of being mysterious. Yes, yes, yes. You keep it moving. You keep it light. So one of the things that you've got that's very controversial about the rules is you tell women not to talk too much. Yes. Tell me the mindset behind that. And yeah, let's just start there. Women historically are over talkers, mm-hmm. you know. And, oversharers. Yeah, oversharers. Mm-hmm. And we can like blow a guy out the water. I mean <laughs> – if I was my complete self on dates, I never would have another date. I mean, like, girls can just talk. Ellen and I are on the phone, like, five hours and, like, yeah. wow, it's been five hours. We love talking. Talking is a sport yeah. to women. Whereas I know men who work with, like, I say, my my husband works with his brother. I'm like, so, you know, how's his foot or whatever? I'm like, I, didn't, I don't know. I didn't even ask him. They don't even talk. They're in the same so room true. and they don't even say anything. Yep. Maybe they talk about, the like, the game, the sport, like, who won. Mm-hmm. That's about it. The Yankees won. End of conversation. End of conversation. Yeah. Whereas girls are like, I said this and he said that and I wore this. Do you think he didn't call me because I wore that? I mean, they could talk. They could take a date. Like we get, you know, we do private consultations. Yes. Women email us a first date. It's literally like a volume. It's like a book. It just goes on Where and they on. Just talk, and then talk, the waiter talk, came. Talk. Yep. And then this hat, like mm-hmm. every single word that was said on the date. Wow. Whereas guys are like, I went on a date, and then they go watch a game. Yeah. Now they turn on ESPN. So what if you're with a guy who's not that talkative? Do you just have to, like, pinch yourself under the table to be like, don't say anything? He has to talk more. I mean, if he likes you, he will, he will. entertain and ask questions. and Even if he's shy? Yeah. I mean, we think okay. shy guys figure something out. Like, Yeah, I think so, too. I think that's a misconception, like, where women, like— pity men. Well, like, he's quiet. He's shy. Like, yeah. I need to help him. And it's like, no, like, you actually don't. And yeah. you're hurting yourself by, like, trying to help him. Right. Mm-hmm. We have a, well, she's a friend now, but she was a client. She's actually, you know, a housewife of New Jersey. Anyway, she was working at a dating um, matchmaking service. And okay. a guy came in and said, she said, what, am, what are you looking for? And he said, you. And he's very shy. And she said, I don't date clients. You know, it's, it's against our policy. He literally okay. jumped on the table. And it's like, I have to date you. It's like they're married now for 20 years. Wait, I'm obsessed. Yes. So if they see something that they want, yeah, they, they see, Even a shy. shy guy will be not shy. He'll be okay. Superman. He'll be like Clark Kent in the booth. I don't mm-hmm. know if you know. And he'll change into Superman because- Just magically all of a sudden. Yes. He loses his shyness. He'll find, he'll find his will to- Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So how can women be mysterious in the modern age of social media? You know, that's hard. I mean, that's why we mm-hmm. wrote the last book, Now Your Mother's Rules, and why the new book, The Rules Handbook, is coming out because mystery has vanished. Everybody knows everything about everyone. Like, you really have to shut it down a little bit. Like mm-hmm. like you just said, you're not going to talk about the three guys that you like. And don't share everything on social media. Just it should be pretty photos and interesting restaurants. Like, don't say, oh, my God, I met the guy of my dreams last night and post it on – because well, if, I'm doing that though because I'm a dating influencer. So I was right, but ask talk about you, other people' dating li- lives. Like, try not to talk about the guy you want to marry. When you're married or engaged, you can flash the ring. Like, yeah, too many women say they're in a relationship on Facebook or 
post on Instagram before it's really Official. a done deal. Yep. And then the guy breaks up with them and then they have to unpost everything. It's like, don't do that. Wait until you have the ring. Wait until you're yeah. in your glory and then you can tell the world. It's like premature So posting. keep it hush-hush. Yeah. Don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. So when it comes to the, like your day-to-day, like let's say that you're really good about not talking about him, yeah. but he follows you on Instagram and you post a story when you wake up of your coffee – at midday when you're at the gym, in the evening when you're out to drinks with friends, right. and then like a little like good night world, like because maybe you're an influencer, maybe you're, you're just like a normal girl. Um, what do you think about that? Should you block him from viewing your stories? Like is it okay for him to see all of those details about you? Because it really mm-hmm. does take away the mystery. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think you can post, just post less and never about him. Okay, so post less and never about him. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I would prioritize getting married over having interesting Instagram. I mean, unless it's for my business. But if you're a food influencer, post about food. If you're mm-hmm. a dating but I expert, can, post about other people's other dating. People's dating do, not yours. Yeah. You, you should be mysterious. And that's why I think for me right now, I'm trying to transition into backing away from oversharing about my personal dating life because right. I really do want marriage. It's like right. my true intention. And that's why I'm doing my featured singles now. And right. I'm really trying to find another way to spotlight everyone else's relationships yes. because I don't want to all of a sudden wake up and be 35 and be like, oh, shit. Right. I've just spent the past three years trying to date to find my husband. But because I shared every detail on the internet, yeah. I'm still single. Men are very private. Yes. So, you know, that's why there are a lot of divorces on The Housewives because the men are dragged to be on the show and they're like, you know, I don't want this much exposure. And they if don't the wife the persists – they get divorced. But if the wife says, okay, I'm going to back off and, you know, you really can't make a man like, you know, like the monkey at the circus and just like, you can't do that. Yeah. But what I would say is like, what you did with the 28 days was really amazing. I think that was really gr- a great you. idea because it, too many, the other mistake women make is they don't go out enough. Like I'll say to them, what are you doing about your dating life? And they're like, well, I go to the gym and I go to work and yes. then I see family and friends. And I'm like, but what are you doing to meet someone? Nothing. They're not on the dating apps. They say they they haven't met, you know, dating apps suck or, you know, they don't want to go to contrived singles event. Then what are you doing? They're doing Netflix. You know, that's what they're – So what are – And when you're sitting on the couch and you're eating chips, you're kind of going down the wrong direction. You're not meeting – nobody's knocking down your door, you know? So I think it was great that you did the 28 days. So you did do the exposure of those guys. Mm -hmm. But now that that's over – just suddenly be mysterious about your own life and just talk about the other people you're fixing up or whatever you, you want. Yeah. But just don't talk about any guys you're dating. Okay. I'm gonna Not bring, until you're engaged. I'm going to bring the mystery back. Yes. Not until I'm engaged. So what about – I can't like show like um, this is my boyfriend. I would To the world. Do you, you know how many – No, because many boyfriends don't turn into husbands. Because people overshare. Well, not that's not the only reason. Like okay. your boyfriend, girlfriend, and then he decides, you know what? I don't want to get married right away. Like, I want to wait five years, and you want to get married now. It's like Mm -hmm. so many things can – like, people say to me all the time, when can I stop doing the rules? I say, when you have the ring. Like, I didn't didn't call him. Even after we were boyfriend-girlfriend, I continued not to call him. So you never called him first? You never texted him first? You never – There was no texting (laughs) back then, but (laughs) I didn't call. Yeah. And even now, sometimes I'm about to call him, and he calls me – you I was let, just like, you, you know what? To you. Let, let it just queen. keep being the same. Like, yeah. if it works, don't fix it. You know. Yeah. So yeah, because a boyfriend is not a done deal. No, it's definitely guys not. break up with girls. They're like, you know what? I didn't know that you brushed your teeth that way. Mm-hmm. I don't. You know, like they make stuff up. The economy. I don't think I'm ready to. You know. Totally. Like, especially in New York, Biden. I can't propose. Like all this stuff. You know, it gets the climate change. There's I don't know if I could propose. Excuse. Yeah, they're yeah. just like. They can wait because they can have children at 70, like Al Pacino or whatever. Totally. Whereas women Robert need to get married now, mm-hmm. you know? So oh, freeze yeah, your eggs if, you know, you think, if you have to. You think, you think freeze your eggs? Is freeze your eggs, in? yeah. I'm like torn about freezing well, my eggs. Well, not you. I'm just saying in general, if okay. a woman is concerned about fertility, yeah. freeze your eggs because guys don't necessarily marry you. Yeah, and they don't have the same biological clock yes. that we do. Yeah. I'm just on the fence about it because I don't want to give myself any more procrastination reasons. Right. So I'm kind of like yeah, you can wait my, until you're 35 yeah, or so. I but can I'm, wait. yeah, but everyone's. But on I'm a just saying, don't post line. when he's a boyfriend. Post when he's a fiance. So I'm. That's actually a hot take. Like I'm not going to post whoever I'm dating until they're my fiance. Yes. 
cute i love that um so why can't you talk to a guy first or ask him out so there's a lot of women who dm me and they're like how do i let a guy know that i like him whether it's a coworker, whether it's a physical therapist whether it's you know, just the guy on the street, like a lot of women want to quote unquote drop the handkerchief. Yeah. And you say don't do it. You can't. Okay. Tell us why. Because if he hasn't made the move, I mean, sometimes I get um, a DM saying, you know, my coworker, I say, how long have you been called? Three years. In three years, he has not asked you to lunch. Like it's dead. Mm-hmm. It's like never happening. Yeah. And if you have to go over to him, what if you find out that you're not his luck because down the road, he'll drop you for the girl he... He likes. actually likes. And you can't tell your dentist, do you want to go for coffee? Your dentist has to say, do you want to go for coffee? Yeah. And I, even then you should say, wow, is it, is it a good idea because I'm your patient? And then they'll find you another dentist. This is what guys do when they want to date okay, like a coworker or yeah. something. Or a CEO. We, I know a CEO who wanted to date a secretary. He found her another job at another company and then they dated and, then and got he married. Dated her. Yeah. They will okay. move – they will they'll like, move mountains. They're men. They'll, yeah. they'll fire HR. They'll figure something out if they okay. really like you. But yeah. you can never like go to a dentist or a coworker or a neighbor and say, you know, I have a crush on you. So never approach the guy in never. any circumstance. No. So there's no exceptions to this rule. No. 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 Okay. I mean, an exception would be that you never liked him. He pursued you. And then one day you wake up and realize, you know what? I do like him. And then you can- Then you him- can say, you know, do you want to be friends or more than friends? Like he accepted that you- just wanted to be friends. And then one day you realized- Oh, actually, you know, like he's, romantically. Yeah. Then you could say, you know, do you still want to go out? You can give him the hint. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But he's already made the move. Along, you know, he already made Beforehand, the move. Beforehand. Where it was right. abundantly clear. Okay. Yes. Um, how do you feel about sporadic man, men, situationships, the guys who pop in and out of your life who you think are, are deep down your soulmate? Like, what is your solution to those men? Because a lot of people get stuck on people or men for like years and years and years. Yeah. Or the situationship, which is even more painful. What's your solution to those women? If a guy skips one week, it's over. One week. Yeah. So there is no situationships or sporadic. There, it, it doesn't exist in the rules world. In the rules world, it's like clockwork. Yeah. Every by Wednesday, he's asking for Saturday night, or he's asking at the end of the date for the next week. It's like is it clockwork. still is it still Saturday night, or is, because like a lot of the guys who I date in New York City. The first couple weeks, it's during the week, but eventually mm-hmm. you want us to get to that Saturday night spot. Right. Why is that? Saturday night is universally date night. Okay. You know, our book is published in 27 countries, and everybody's like, well, mm-hmm. in France, they like to talk for four hours. It's like, no. In France, it's, it, it's everything universal. is this, Every man is the same all over the world. Yep. And even if he's like um, a yogi or, you know, like Richard Gere with his um, Buddha stuff— He's still a man first before yeah. he's a Buddha or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So, <laughs> there, so are no, there are no exceptions okay. universally. So, and then also, like, let's say they ask you for Friday night instead of Saturday night. Is that a red flag? No, I mean, the first couple of dates could be during the week. Okay. But then, by the second or third, then it, needs it should to be, be Saturday, Saturday night. Okay. Because what is he doing on Saturday night if yeah. he's not with you? He's with some other girl. No, I agree. Yeah. How about the first couple of dates, though? Do they need to give you those three days of notice every time for the first few dates? Or can you be a little bit more spontaneous at the beginning? No, it should be three, three days, days in advance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We never see a guy the same day, even if we have no plans. Yep. And you lie. You just say, I plans, and you keep it light. Well, your plans could be washing your hair. Or going to yoga. Yeah, that's a plan. The that's that a plan. That is a plan. They don't yeah. need to know the details. Um, so do you believe in soulmates? Definitely. You do? Yeah. Okay. But they My are, soulmates in this room. I know. I'm yes. so honored to have them here. <laughs> but do you, you just need to wrangle them. Like, we're like cowgirls, and we need to follow the rules. And, like, our soulmates are there, but we just need to follow the rules. Because a lot of people are like, if it's meant to be, it will be, even if I'm crazy, even if I drink too much, even if I do X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So what are your thoughts on people who say that? Well, sometimes the woman doesn't realize that she's doing the rules by accident. Like she's she's like, I'm going to be crazy. I'm going to do anything I want. But her vibe is, I don't care if this works out or I'm not into relationships. So that vibe actually- Attracts. Attracts a man. Like, for example, we, you know, I mean, Brooke Shields or other, there are various celebrities. It wasn't classic, the rules, but she said to him, you know, I don't know if I want to- be in a relationship. I just want to be friends. And they mm-hmm. would talk and she enjoyed the talks. And one day he said to her, you know, it doesn't work like that. Like you can't have me in your life and, you know, like just be a friend. Like mm-hmm. he kind of put her on the spot to like choose and she was, yep. she chose him. But 
So it wasn't classic, the rules, but she was like, her vibe wasn't, I have to be in a relationship. It was yeah. like, I enjoy talking to you. So it, it all goes back to you're doing the rules either by the book, because you read the book, or you're doing them by accident. But yeah. it's the same. Or just like naturally. It's the same result. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, so what rule do women get stuck on the most, do you think? They want to initiate something. They want to initiate something. That's the rule? That rule. Okay. Interesting. Um, or or if they don't hear from the guy that they are somewhat dating, they say, you know, I haven't heard from you. Are we still on for the weekend? They mm-hmm. try to confirm. Yeah, that's another you know, one. confirming. For me, because I – Honestly, I'm pretty passive and pretty aloof when it comes to men. But the one thing I get caught up on is wanting to confirm with them. So if I have not heard from them like the day before, I'll be like, hey, are we still on? And you guys say, don't Don't do that. that. And and I like the way you guys phrase it, though, in the book where you're like, you know what? If Saturday night comes around or Friday night comes around and it falls through, okay, that happens. Such is life. Yeah. But you still don't break the rule. Yeah, we we don't we don't confirm. We I'd rather the date fall through and I find out he's not my husband than confirm. It's so desperate. It's confirm. desperate. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So even if you're a type A planner, yeah. you just kind of have even to- Even in business, we don't really believe in confirming. Like whenever we've done TV or this or that, we just were like, well, if we don't hear from them, we'll just yeah. we'll take our makeup somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like, Of course. You know, you confirm with me. It's like, we don't want to confirm because that shows more interest. Like the less interested party always wins. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, have any rules been changed or amended over time? In the first book, we had said, don't tell your therapist you're doing the rules because early on, Mm -hmm. we thought therapists would be against this whole idea of not being like an open book on dates. But then we heard from so many therapists saying, we recommend your book because women have erroneously gone on dates thinking that a date was like therapy. And we never meant it to be like. We just said therapy's here and dating is- Is here. So yeah, that we, we have a yeah. lot of um, dating okay. coaches. We train women to become dating coaches and okay. they're therapists and they love it because it the rules is boundaries. It is. Yeah, That's truly. what we need. And it's self-love. It's self-esteem. Yes. I think it's very pro-women. I think right. it empowers women right. to right. know what to do if, if they don't know. Like you don't have to yeah. read the book. Um, what are the biggest buyer beware? So buyer beware is like a red flag, right? Right. And it kind of gives you like the hint that this guy might not be your husband because he exhibits X, Y, or Z behavior. Right. So what are some of the biggest things that women should watch for early days with men? I mean, if a guy asks me to split the check, I, it's not that he's a buyer beware. He doesn't like me mm-hmm. because when you're on a date for the women as well as the man, I'm thinking, do we have chemistry? Do I like you? Can I be in a museum with you for five hours. You know, if I'm thinking about the bill, then I'm not thinking yeah. the right way. It's yeah. not romantic. It's so not that romantic. for me is a deal deal breaker. Mm-hmm. You know, if he's an alcoholic, if he's abusive, if he screams at the waiter, you know, mm-hmm. if he doesn't open door. I mean, not that I need a door open for me. It's I can nice, open my own door. It's just those gestures. I remember going on a date and it was a first date and the guy didn't stand up and he didn't even ask me if I wanted a drink. He just sat there like a lump on a log. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I think I over, I think I double booked. Yeah. <laughs> After five minutes, I was like, and my doorman was like, Sherry, what happened? Because my doorman would watch me go so on all these dates. He goes, did you give him a chance? I said, just trust me. I know. A lump In on five a log. minutes, I know. Yeah. No, you totally. don't stand up. You don't offer me a drink. It's like, it's not going to go anywhere. No, of course. That's There's very There's no chivalry. You, and chivalry is required in romance, I believe. So I was following Steve Harvey. Are you familiar with yes, Steve Harvey's yes, book? Yeah. I was following his 90-day rule during my 28 days because yeah. I was just terrified that the world would slut shame me. And so I was going on these 28 dates. I didn't want to have the conversation about, am I sleeping with them? Am I not? So I publicly was like, I'm doing Steve Harvey's 90-day rule just to kind of combat that yeah. and to try out his theory. I was really interested – about your guys' take about hooking up in the rules. Can you guys, can you kind of tell me a little bit about that? I've, I obviously already know, but can right. you tell the listeners like what the philosophy about hooking up and the timeline around it is in the rules? Right. Well, we feel that, I mean, some of our clients are no sex before marriage, like they're yeah. religious and that's mm-hmm. fine. And they meet men that respect that and it works out. Yeah. And you know, it actually works in their favor because the guy proposes sooner, like in six months, because mm-hmm. he doesn't want to wait much longer. You yeah, know? he's ready. So it's, mm-hmm. it works out. We're not like a 90, I mean, we respect Steve Harvey, but not the 90-day rule. We're like, when you're exclusive and you know that there's nobody else, and he says, I don't want to be on any apps and I don't want to see anyone else, 
if you feel comfortable after that amount so of time. And that's usually, that could be, you know, six to eight dates or something like that. Okay. so But we don't to announce eight. to a guy, I don't sleep before, you know, no, like this not, is what- You don't tell him because I used yeah, to tell them. We like, don't announce like, Just it. so you know. Women manipulate that because they'll say, I don't sleep with men until we're exclusive. So you know what the guy does? Let's be exclusive. Yeah. And then they sleep with him. They'll say, and I'm then, committed. And then he goes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've changed my mind. Like, they use it as a way to get you to sleep with them by saying, totally. let's be exclusive. But they don't mean it. Okay. So never say to a guy. So don't tell them. Don't show them your no. cards. No. Okay. It's interesting, though, because you also bring up not waiting too long because he may have a low sex drive. There right. may be other reasons why he's okay with not sleeping right. with you. Yes. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. We've had clients who didn't listen to us that said, no, I want to wait. And they found out the guy doesn't want to have that much sex. I mean, like, rare, and you're rarely. And kind of stuck with somebody yeah, who doesn't and, have a sex drive that yeah, matches yours. Yeah, yeah. Or they could be gay. Yeah. That, that could be another yes. one. That so, happened dur during my 28 dates. I think one of the people I right. dated was maybe not even straight. Right. Yeah. So you do want to sleep with someone at some point mm -hmm. when you're exclusive because you want to know if you're compatible yeah. in that that area. Totally. I think it matters. Yeah. Um, are there any other Steve Harvey um, rules? I guess he doesn't call them his rules, but philosophies that you either align with or don't align with because he talks a lot about, you know, early days. Don't ask him what his favorite color is. That doesn't matter. Talk about what he wants. Does he want marriage? Does he want kids? Does he want all those things? And so his philosophy is being very direct, whereas your philosophy is being a little bit more aloof, being more mysterious. Right. What are your thoughts? We don't we don't bring up marriage, kids, relationship. We don't, don't bring up any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Jay Shetty. We're not bringing any of that up on a date. Steve Harvey's a man. So with all yes. due respect, even though we agree with, with his- love. He's- He's like a man will say these things, but mm -hmm. when he was dating his now wife, he literally was like, I think, doing a comedy act and she was in the front row and he said, that's going to be my wife. She didn't have to say anything about marriage or kids. It's like what he did and what he says are a little bit different. Yeah. You cannot spell all that out. Like women go on dates, like with mm -hmm. a clipboard, you know, what's your five-year goal and how many kids do you want? That's what I was it's doing. Like, I fully was doing that. And then I read the rules and I was like, oh. Yeah, you have to talk about movies, work, weather, mm -hmm. nonsense for let a while. Him come, let him come to you yeah. for those things. They will say if they like you, you know, do you yeah. see so, do you see yourself getting married or what do you – And if they in? don't come to you with that stuff, that's a red flag or a buyer beware. Yeah. yeah. They'll bring it up. Like sometimes they'll say, you know, that's where my brother proposed or they'll, you know, I mm -hmm. they'll talk about their nephews. We find that guys that want kids talk about kids. Yeah. Like, if you listen, that's why we, another reason that we tell women not to talk is not that we're trying to suppress your beautiful personality. Your it's spirit. that you need yeah. to listen on mm -hmm. dates. Is the yep. guy talking about liquor? Is he talking about kids? Is he talking mm -hmm. about work? What is he talking about? Then you'll yeah. find out who you're supposed, you know, supposed to be with. How do you feel about age gaps, dating younger men, dating older men? I'm, I'm, this is a selfish question, oh, okay. but I would love to know. We're not big on dating guys younger than maybe two or three years because okay. the dynamic, it can be off. You know, it's okay. like so no you're like his mother. How about older men? Yeah. I mean, you know, some of the rules, celebrities, they're with men that are 10, 20 years older, but it was completely the rules and they're, they're not marrying them for the money. You know, mm -hmm. like Catherine Zeta-Jones, I don't know if you know anything about her yeah. and Michael Douglas. Mm -hmm. He saw her in a movie. This is classic rules that apply to regular people. Okay. He just saw her in a movie and he flew to the south of France to the Cannes Film Festival to meet her. Yeah. Like that's what guys do when they meet their- When they see something they like, they, they see, go they, and yeah, get it. They go get it. And mm -hmm. he said, I want to father your children. He like came on really strong and she oh, said- wow. That's she like said, love bombing. She said, um, I've heard a lot about you. Good night. And, you know, and he pursued her and she said, she said this to Vanity Fair magazine. She didn't say the rules, but she said, my mother told me, don't give it away. You know, code for like, don't be so obsessed. Don't give them sex right away. Like, Make and he for worked for it like crazy. Like mm -hmm. at one point, I think they were dating six months and he said, do you even like me? And she goes, well, I'm here. I'm with you. Know, you. Yeah. yeah. Like she played it and he is so crazy about her. Now some people say, well, he's 25 years older, but they have a real bond. I mean, and he yeah. was a player and he was a cheater. He cheated on his first wife. It wasn't the rules. Mm -hmm. So you can take the same man and do the rules on him and he'll be faithful. But it's important that you're doing the rules from the very beginning. Yes, from okay. the, the first minute. So what if someone's listening to this right now and they're like, holy shit, I messed up. But there's like this guy who 
I'm with right now. And they weren't, they didn't start out by doing the rules. They're still together, Mm -hmm. but they maybe feel him slipping away or they want to apply this, you know, this um, strategy to their love life now. Like, is it too late? Can you do it halfway through meeting somebody and dating them? If she spoke to him first, it's over. What? Really? Yes. In every scenario? But what if she is his look and she did speak to him first and it just like is like coincidence? It's, I mean, sometimes they say it's mutual. Like, okay, we have one client where she messaged him first on a mm-hmm. dating app, but he said, you beat me too and I was going to do it. Mm-hmm. But I don't really love that because he's always going to feel like she wanted me. Mm-hmm. It's just not good for the dynamic. It should be that he always feels like I, you know, that you're the prize. Like yeah, had I had to go you. after you. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But I really like how you guys think about rejection and you say in the book, you know, wipe that one tear and keep going. Yes. Can you talk about how people should think about dating or about rejection and dating? Sure. I mean, one of the biz- biggest mistakes women make, they'll call us and they'll say a relationship ended and I say, when? And they're like, three years ago. And they haven't done anything to date in three years. Like they're like mourning and mourning. processing it for three And they're going years. to therapy and they're taking bubble baths and they're going to yoga and we're like, it's too no, much. We take yoga classes in between dates. We go to therapy in between dates. We cry like, between gotta, dates. Because you're getting older. Like mm-hmm. as, you know, every day goes by, yeah. you know, the guys are meeting. And some of the guys are like going out with women half their age. And like you're getting older. You're not. It's like. The, the clock is ticking. It's not a level playing field. No. A guy can break up with you and. A fifty-year-old can start dating a thirty-year-old, and you're forty-nine. And it all the you're time. Yeah. yeah, you're. It's 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 rough. Yeah. So the biggest thing you have to do is just say it wasn't meant to be, and literally cry on the way to the sports bar, cry on the way to the cool restaurant, yeah. cry on the way to the singles event or the hiking. Like find it. out where the men are: yeah. hiking, golf, tennis. I mean, I took up tennis. I didn't care about tennis, but men were there. Everything I did, mm-hmm. and this is the biggest takeaway is I didn't go out with a girlfriend. Like if a girlfriend wants to go to the movies, I like find somebody else. I am every minute that I wasn't working or mm-hmm. sleeping or exercising. Yeah. I was at some kind of singles or Event club or, or, you know, club getaway in Connecticut, yeah. club med. You were very serious about finding your husband. Oh, yeah. Where did you find him? At a singles event. Oh, really? At a singles event. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay. The you, reason you is don't like play some, around Sherry, and I really respect it. <laughs> the reason is like if you go to just a random bar, mm-hmm. you might just meet heavy drinkers. You know, I right. wanted to go to a place where a guy was marriage minded. Yeah, he was active. He was yeah. Yeah, and some people say, well, those guys are ner- nerdy or this or that. But I was like, I'm only looking for one. It's yeah. like I'm not looking for fifty one. husbands. It's like there's always going to be a normal person within the nerdy crowd. Totally. Like, and the nerdy guys are probably better than the yeah. heavy drinker guys or the yeah. club rats anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, My I, husband's not ner- nerdy either. Oh, it's no, like I met him. He's cool very guys cool. go to yeah, these yeah. things because oh, yeah. they also want to meet – you know, they want to get married. Totally. So, yeah. Okay. So how do you get a guy to commit to you? So I made a lot of mistakes during my 28 dates in February – And I got to the point where I was dating a guy for two months. And then, like, he was always pursuing me, pursuing, pursuing me. And then I finally showed him all my cards before we got into the relationship. So I was basically doing the rules until I all of a sudden realized I liked him. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of blew it. So what if somebody's like, okay, I really want him to be my boyfriend. What can a girl do after, like, two to three months to get him to ask her out? Or is there anything she can do? What did you do to blow it? Um, I asked him, what are we? And oh. then he was like, I don't know. And I'm like, he's like, what do you want? And I'm like, I think we should be boyfriend, girlfriend. And then he said, let me ask my therapist. <gasps> oh, wow. And then I was like, wow. Yeah, we can never say what are we at that point. We like can't. At, Okay. No. I mean, the only time you can bring stuff up is he's already said exclusive. And then after nine months or so, you could say, I've enjoyed these nine months together, but I'm old-fashioned. I was wondering where this is going, just to see if he's headed towards marriage, if he doesn't bring it up already. So you can't bring up marriage until nine months in? No, not really. really. No. Shit. And okay. you can't bring up, what are we? Because saying it means that you want that. Because yeah. what girl would say, what are we, to a guy she doesn't like? You know totally. what I mean? And I felt like the pressure of the world watching me, and so I was like ready to be like, okay, I found one. You know what I mean? It was kind of like me being in the public eye. Right. Kind of created that boiling point, yes. which normally I maybe wouldn't have said, what right. are we? Right. But you're telling all you women everywhere, regardless of who you are, don't say, what What are we? No. What you can do mm-hmm. is typically, like you're seeing them once a week the first month, 
Yep. Twice a week, the second month. When he starts saying he wants to go on a trip or okay. he wants to do this or that, just say you can't get away. And what'll happen is he won't be able to just see you without a commitment. Mm. And then he'll have to choose, you know, like he'll know that to get you to go to Florida or whatever, he's mm-hmm. going to have to say, that's the only card you can play is your- He'll have to say your- Your girlfriend. absence. Your okay. absence. You so can, pull back. Pull back. Mm-hmm. Like skip a weekend, you know, say okay. I'm going I'm going away with the girls, like just disappear. And then he'll be like, hey, I thought we were- But what about the guys who are like, I just, I thought we were boyfriend, girlfriend, but like they don't want to say it. They don't want to put the title. Well, are, on, are they still on the dating apps? Are they but seeing not. you every Saturday night? Like, but there's is that evidence. just a girl being too anxious where she wants that title and she wants him to officially ask her? You know what I'm saying? I mean, honestly, if a guy doesn't bring it up within the first couple of months in at your age group, yeah, then something, then he's not. And then just keep moving. A guy that really wants to be exclusive with you, yeah is competitive and doesn't want you to be with any other guys. So, so typically in the first few dates, mm-hmm. six dates, he'll say, I don't want you to date anyone else. I'm not dating anyone else. Like they, men become possessive when they want you. When they really want you. Yeah. And if they're not possessive, that's a problem. That's a problem. Like when my yeah. husband, we were dating, I don't know, a few weeks, months, whatever, he dropped me off at the gym and he goes, don't leave there with anyone else. And I was thinking to myself, <laughs> who <laughs> who, who could want? I possibly leave with? See, he thought because That's I did so the rules, though. because I did the rules, he thought I was the prom queen. Totally. Which I wasn't. And no, Ellen you wasn't. are, though. You are a catch. Thanks. Yeah. But I, in my head, it was mm-hmm. like, there was nobody. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it was him the whole so, time. So, yeah. Yeah. So he would drop me off and he would have, because I was mysterious and I disappeared, mm-hmm. he created a story about me mm-hmm. that was that everybody wanted me. Yep. And I wasn't going to argue with him. I'm like, okay. All right, Less is I'll try. Sometimes. I'll try to fight them off. Yeah, okay. yeah. Let me bring my bat. Um, okay, so so your best weapon is mystery. They, mystery. Then they start to think that you're something. Yeah, and like it's just like don't tell them everything. Yeah, it's fine. Like you don't have to be an open book. Save that for your girlfriend. Save yes. that for your mom. But if they do ask you, like, what did you do? So yeah, what we do were you dating do in that situation. We started to date two months, and no, we were dating a month, and he's and so I was on the one. Mm-hmm. Night a, ru- night a week rule. And he said, can I see you the next day for Labor Day? And it wasn't, I couldn't because it was once. So I said, I can't. And he said, well, what are you doing? And I said, I'm going to the gym. And he said, that's what you're doing instead of seeing me? I said, yes. So if they do point blank ask you, what are you doing when you're tell not seeing me? Tell them you washed your hair or you saw your mother or you went to the gym, but don't volunteer it. Okay. So don't lie. Don't lie. Yeah. Don't make up some like <laughs> elaborate. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Um, I had a girlfriend who I was recently talking to where I was asking her. She's been seeing her boyfriend for like a year and a half. And I was like, do you think you guys will get engaged soon? And she responded by being like, well, he's really cautious about marriage because, you know, he really wants to make sure that, you know, the person that he ends up with is the right person because his parents were divorced and went through a nasty divorce. And so there's a lot of women who are with these guys who have this childhood trauma or whatever and they use it as an excuse not to commit, how do you deal with those guys? How, how long are they dating? Like a year and a half. And how old are they? They're older than me, like 32 and 35 or something. So he spoke to her first. Yeah, I I don't know. And the they're whole, exclusive. And is she doing yeah, the rules? Yeah, they're boyfriend or? girlfriend. They're, she's not a rules girl. Oh, does she's she like, see him she's all like the time? The opposite of a rules girl. She sees him all the time. Okay, so what you do with a guy like that is say, I can't see, I'm old fashioned, so I can't see you anymore until you propose with a ring and a wedding date, so call me when you're ready. Okay. And don't see them while they're figuring it out. See, what women do is they give a guy an ultimatum, Mm -hmm. but they see him, so he has no incentive. This guy has no incentive to marry her because he gets to see her. He's getting all the benefits, I'm sure sex and dinners and whatever. Yep. Trips. Yep. You have to cut them off. Like, okay. we, I don't believe in the trauma because he had to divorce parents. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Yeah. Half I mean, the country's I, divorced. Like, totally. And there's a lot of people with divorced parents who get married. Yeah. I'm telling you, fine. guys will say climate change, They'll the administration, Trump, yeah. money, the promotion they didn't get, anything to get out of it. But if you say, I can't see you anymore without a ring and a wedding date, then let them figure it out. If they meet somebody else, you know, then they weren't supposed to be with your you. husband. Totally. But I would not see a guy that wasn't sure. If a guy doesn't know, then I'm gone. And you can just say I'm old fashioned. Yeah, I'm old fashioned. I, I don't believe in dating you. for more than a year. Yeah. Better ring and a wedding date. So do you think truly the best timeline for someone like me who's 31 would be, you know, start seeing a guy date for a year and by after a year of dating, yeah. I should be getting engaged? Yeah. 
Definitely. Okay. I agree with that. So I love that you endorse yes. it. <laughs> um, so do you have any other advice for someone my age, like in my 30s? Because a lot of the people who, you know, follow my journey, they're also single between the ages. I think my core demographic is like 28 to 35. And a lot of us want to get married. We want kids. Yeah. Do, what's your biggest piece of advice? Besides, because like everyone needs to read both of these books. Right. They're so good. But besides that. Well, be on like every dating app and just write the least amount, like least amount of photos, no photos with kids and pets and like just headshot, a body shot. I mean, I know some require six photos, but Mm -hmm. just no bikini, nothing crazy, you know, and write the least amount of words. Mm -hmm. Like don't even fill out everything that they ask you to fill out. Like they have all those prompts and, you know, my favorite, you know, astrological sign, like just ignore as much as possible. Just say when I'm not working as a VP, I like to hike, bike and watch for Bake films. lasagna. Or yeah, something watch for, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just be mysterious. Yes. Be on every dating app except Bumble. Bumble is- No Bumble? Bumble is anti-rules because the girl has to make the first move. Yeah. And now I heard they I'm have really a feature it. that it negates it, but then what's the point of Bumble? If like, just be on normal, regular dating apps, not ones that empower women to make the first Let move. Let him come to you. Yes. And then the last thing I wanted to ask you, because we were talking about this at the beginning, was there's a lot of men who are like, no, I like it when the girl comes to me. I like it when a girl asks me out or makes the first move. What is your response to those people? Because, of course, like everything in this world, there's always like a little bit of controversy. There's always, you know, two sides to every story. So what would you say to those people or those men who say, no, I like it? I mean, first of all, I would never ask a man what he – wants or things because I know the truth. You know, it's like, yeah. I have two older brothers. I have a husband. I know how men, like, you can, if you ask them, they say, sure, I, I'd love that. I'd love her to cook me dinner. I'd love her to come to my apartment. Mm-hmm. But they don't marry those girls because there's no challenge. They want the girl, they want to be able to say to the kids or their friends, I had to work so hard to get, they want the prize. Now, yeah. it doesn't have to be that she has to be the most beautiful, mm-hmm. but she just has to be like a little bit indifferent, aloof. aloof, like not interested, that he got the girl to change her mind about him, that she got the girl to agree to go out with him. Yes. You know, Jerry Seinfeld met Jessica at the gym. She was married like two months. She just came from her honeymoon. Mm -hmm. She was in a bad mood because her marriage wasn't working out. And he told her a joke and she said, I'm not in the mood to laugh. Like, he's Jerry Seinfeld. Like, women are throwing themselves. Yeah. And he had to tell her another joke. And then she agreed to give him. It's like, he walks around so proud that he got the one girl that didn't watch Seinfeld, wasn't interested. Like, that's what they she want. She didn't even know me. Didn't the same thing happen with George and Amal Clooney? Yes. Where she was super aloof and, yes. like, it took him so long just to get her to go on one yeah. date with him. Yeah. It has to be so, like that. Okay. And then the last thing – okay, I keep saying the last thing. When it comes to dating apps, what if a girl can't seem to get guys to get off of the dating apps? Because there's a lot of guys who are just, like, wasting your time – It almost seems impossible. One thing I've been telling my following, Mm -hmm. which if you disagree, please tell me, is like you can – if he's already liked you, you've already said hello back and forth a few times, you can just say like, are you free to get a drink tonight? Would that be rules girl approved? I know you're about to say no. Are you free to get a drink? Why would a girl ask a guy? Because these guys are not getting off the dating Okay. And I just want to get off the dating app. Oh, you mean to just – you mean you want them to ask you out and they're not, so you stop writing. Okay, so you if just a guy stopped. message after four messages, he yeah. says, "Hi, you're pretty," blah blah, yep. and you write thanks, and then he says, "What do you like to do for fun?" You say, "Go to the beach," blah blah. By four messages, if he doesn't say, "Can I have your number?" or "Can we meet?" or something, you don't write back. You just stop responding. You just stop responding. Even in a city like New York City, where there's like way more women than there yes. are men, and they yes. just seem to have. The night I met my husband, there were like thirty women and five guys. And I literally just, walked in and I wanted to shoot myself. I was like, <laughs> I am meeting nobody tonight. The odds yeah. were so against me. Yeah, they were And stacked. he walked right up to me. Like, okay. Boom. So, so it could be, the well. odds could be against you more. Like we've heard it all. More women than men, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You still never ask a man out. Okay. And is your, I know your daughter's here. So is she following the rules? I think so. I mean. <laughs> is that? I think it's osmosis. I think like. It's like in your blood. It's in her blood. Okay. She's rulesy like with business too. She's very That's like. Good. I'll think about I love it. it. You know, I take I'll take it or leave it. Like never, never be desperate. Like that's the yeah. worst thing you can do. You have yeah. to be very chill. Like you have so many offers, so many suitors, so many. And it doesn't matter if you do or not. No. Just act like you There's do. There's no like lie detector test or anything. No. It's like And you think that they might know, but they don't know. Guys can't read your mind. 
Yeah, I mean, what are they going to do? Hire a private eye to no, find out not. that you're washing and your if hair? They do, they're a little cuckoo. Yeah. Okay, so you have a new book coming out in yes. what? I want to say November. September. 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 The okay. Rules Handbook. Okay. What's and that it's like be a about? daily. It's like it's a daily motivational guide, but it includes a lot of things we've been talking about that are very new, mm-hmm. like Instagram and the apps and the crazy stuff that girls are falling for. Like they fall for this. You know, what's your favorite color? Like seven questions and. Nonsense. You like yep. dates or nothing. Like if you don't ask me out, goodbye. Like goodbye. I have no time for time wasters. Okay. So this is coming out in September. In the meantime, you guys have to read both of these books. They're Bible. They're so good. Thank you so much, Sherry. Where can everybody find you? The rules book.com is our website. Okay. And we do we have courses, we have consultations. And, and you're still doing that? Yeah, we do that. We've been doing that for 20. Ellen and I both do them. And uh because sometimes you can't get your particular situation figured out from the book. The like book. you need and you need a dating history, mm-hmm. a childhood history. Like there's sometimes deep stuff going on. Maybe your father's an alcoholic, you know. Yeah. Like um you're dating unavailable men. Why? Because your father was a workaholic or an alcoholic and he was never home. So you subconsciously date men that are married or unavailable. Yep. And um, and don't pay for anything. Like I, I'm aghast. Like when I have clients who say, I bought them something at the duty free. I'm like, no, like give it to a homeless person. Like don't, when you pay, you're giving a man a signal that you like him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I would never pay for anything. No, the nothing. other day, I pretended not to be able to find my wallet. That's good. Yeah. I mean, that guy was a jerk. Like, he clearly was not into me because, like, what what guy doesn't want to pay? Right. You know what I mean? And so it was, like, his way of probably signaling that. And then he sent me a you up text two days later. Of course, I ignored it. But you know what I mean? Like, just Sometimes don't, guys don't are pay. like, girls They're, do this fake paying. Like, they do the gesture of paying. Don't do the gesture. Don't even do saying? the gesture. You're not even thinking. Go to the bathroom. Reapply your lipstick. Guys are like, oh, no problem. I'll Venmo you. I mean, it's horrible. Like, we are not perpetuate we're not help we're not helping these people so rules girls don't pay we, we don't, don't pay we don't reach we don't even pretend no. we just reapply our lip gloss we go to the bathroom yeah we're we're queens yeah yeah oh exactly. yeah okay cool well thank you so much Sherry. thank this you good luck thanks again to our sponsor first rounds on me if you're tired of endless small talk with an overwhelming number of pen pals go download first rounds on me now and get yourself a real date